Hey everybody, EJ here. Well, we're back, and we did make the changes to the body and the headstock of the guitar like we talked about, because, let's face it, that stain job just sucked. So, I'm gonna take the camera and we're gonna go over what we've gotten through so far. I went ahead and did the painting and everything, and got it all. Uh, I have to, okay. We painted the head, uh, headstock, just the top of it, and I also did the clear coat on it, just to see how it was gonna turn out. And you can see that natural wood grain in there, and that's nice, I like it. I don't have to buff that at all. And of course, CJ, she, that's her, her initials, her autograph on her paintings that she normally does. So now we have personalized this guitar for her. And anyways, down here, we have the body painted, and we got the white perloid pickguard we wanted. Now there's only one thing that we're gonna have to adjust for. You can see that I have three screws in this, and those are the one holes that actually lined up. The other holes didn't line up properly, so we'll have to drill those out again but it's fine it's all part of working on the guitar and getting it together and you see that the uh, neck the joint is covered by this uh, right here radius and then that looks to me like the uh, the bridge will be setting properly where it's supposed to be you got to stay fluid with these things they're going to make adjustments. You're going to realize you have to go back and do something over. But it's fine. And, yeah, the paint job came out nice. It's smooth. It's even. So, we put about three or four coats on this. I can't remember. But it took time because after you spray it, you get a coat on there. And then spray it again with another coat. Then you have to sand it down. Then you might wind up with a bare spot showing that brown stuff on, you know, coming through. You got to spray it again. It took a little bit. But once we get this uh, body clear coated, then we are going to come back inside and we're going to put the tuning machines onto the headstock. And we'll do, do that all in this video. Uh, I will, in another video, take all the components out of this white pit guard and install them into the white purloid. And uh, yeah, we're getting closer and closer with each step. It just takes time. So I'm gonna hand this back to CJ. And we'll put this out of the way. We don't need it right now. And we're going to take the neck off that, excuse me, that is a really tight fit in that neck socket. It works really well. And now we're going to take the body and we're going to take this little bag which has all of the screws for the uh, pit guard and also in here is this package and these are the uh, what they call string, string trees. They're called uh, string retainers. They're what goes down here and here, approximately. There's actual measurements I'll be using. You'll see how I do that later in another video. But they hold, uh, they put tension down on the strings and it helps with the intonation. So, but now, this one. Now I 
Like I said, that looks really good to me. I love the way that came out. There is no buffing needed or anything, in my opinion. It's going to be fine. And yeah, we left the back and the sides just the way it is. No need, no need to, uh, what's the old saying? If it ain't busted, don't fix it. So, get our shoestring out. string that we had on here was causing a dark line up through here and uh, it's not that big of a deal because we're actually going to have a neck plate on top of this but still just wanted to go ahead and get one step ahead of that which is always a good thing to do now we go outside in the heat Right now in Kansas City, I think the high today was supposed to be 91 degrees, but the real feel is, wow, it's really hot. Let's see what's the clear coat we got. Kick this down. for a couple of minutes, make sure it's good. this way a little bit just so that you uh, know you're clearing any bubbles that might be on the top. Just like that. That's all you gotta do. See how far away I am. Not too much. A little hard to see because I don't have that glare of the sun on it. Oh, there's a glare on it. Ooh, I see it too. So we got that side. Now we'll do this side. It doesn't take long for this stuff to dry, but if it's in this sort of uh, weather, I think it's best to leave it outside for a couple of hours. Get one of the fumes are really strong. Yeah. 
I get underneath it here? pinky into a spot right here so we're just going to touch that. Uh, now we stop and look at it. I'm seeing that looking really good. I'm looking for any runs. I got too thick. I'm really not seeing anything yet. And I'll probably come back out here for another coat on it. In some spots it looks real thick, some spots it looks real thin. And like I said, we just leave it alone and let it dry and come back out in an hour and figure out okay, where do we need to touch up? Is there a drip spot? the bottom which is really good and that's one of the big spots where you uh, have drips so I'm happy with this we're gonna leave it alone not touch it let it dry out here in the heat like I said come back out in a hour or so I'll touch it up again and then you'll see in the next video how this turned out but right now we're going back in the house get the air conditioning I work in the heat, so I love my air conditioning on the weekend. Alright, so let's get this door shut. And now, oh, it is bright out there. My eyes got to adjust. So now, I'm going to take this. Pull this out. Get all the components in there. I am sun blind right now because it was so bright looking at that. I can't even see how many of those are in there. There's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Like I said, these are vintage style tuning keys, original fender parts. One of my favorite things to use. So, now there is one issue with these original style. I'm gonna bring the chair. Lean it over like this makes my back sore. Um, now these are all in order of the way they came in the package. That one ferrule I haven't touched yet, but I'm gonna show you why. something I had to go through when I was first working on another guitar a long time back. I didn't realize what I should have done at the time. But these barrels dropped down in here and they kind of got wiggle to them. They're not exactly the same size as these, as these holes. Which means that putting this uh, Putting this tuning key, there's going to be a wiggle there. You don't want that. You want it to be right on. So what I did, with all the rest of them, I took a little bit of this blue painter's tape, and I did about two and a half wraps on it, and that made it, I would say, perfect. I from some tape sticking out. And we can just tear that little bit off. There, that's better. Yeah, there you go. 
rest of them are all fairly well good. I think the paint and the uh, clear coat took up a little bit of space in that hole. Making a video like this, sometimes these sort of things can be just a little bit boring, but it's all part of it. I hope you're being entertained with what Claudia and I, or CJ and I, have put out so far. doing that also is because if they're not tight and you lower the guitar down like this a little bit the barrels will slide right out so now we're done with that all of our little screws in here Drill little holes out and everything. So they just stick on there? Well, they don't just stick on there. No. Well, how do they hold? These little screws. You still have to screw it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Huh? Yeah. Okay. I already got the holes drilled out. I already have this thing. Oops. Can't hear you. I gotta get together. Oh yeah, they do come with two different styles of screw heads. Now this is actually the vintage ones that would have been in there originally. We're just going to go ahead and go with these Phillips. Don't tighten completely down.
leave them a little loosey-goosey. You're going to want to adjust these just back and forth a little bit. doesn't take that long. to have misplaced a couple of these. I don't know where they would have went. That's all right. We got the right tools for it. straight to me. I'm pretty happy with it. But what you can do is you can take a straight edge ruler and go across the bottom of them and it'll help line them all up nice. I think these are fine. That's it. Kitty wants to help. I know, I can see that. <laughs> Anyways, there it is.
our uh, all right. tuning keys are all installed and these are really solid they're tight but they're not too tight if you ever feel that you need to with your tuning keys and you're you know you're getting they're becoming too tight or something like that you normally have little screws on the ends you can loosen them up but also you can you've got this space right back here and you can put just a little bit of three-in-one oil or something like that maybe some graphite oil it'll help them out a lot but yeah that looks good so that's it that's it for this video and uh, we're done next step the next video will be um, transferring the components from the uh, pick guard the white one over to the purloid and that's going to take a while so get some popcorn and a drink ready anyways other than that thank you for all your patience and waiting for these videos to come up thank you for your likes and subscribes we appreciate everything you know with you all watching it means a lot to us and that's it it's the start of the weekend everybody please be safe and god bless Bye.